no finger pointing allowed, an old binary resurfaces to be used in phishing attacks. David, uh, so, you know, it's been a really long time since I've ever used the finger command, uh, probably 20 years since I last used it uh, in Linux uh, or Unix back in the day. But it sounds like there's a new tactic that some uh, fraudsters are using or hackers are using uh, to use finger to deliver malicious payloads. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so you're right. It has been several decades, actually, you know, probably 20, maybe 10 or 20 at least that... Uh, you know, it has been used. And, you know, originally, as you said, uh, originated or was uh, created in you know, Linux and Unix. Um, and hardly in any of the distributions today or even any of the services even running, just because of the fact that it's so old, as you said, and really not in the need for it. And there were some security exploits that came out to it. Even the Morse worm, I think in what, 19 or the 98 or 88, was actually affected by, you know, with that finger. Um, so again, yeah, it's hardly rarely used. But having said that, Microsoft has that in as an actual binary within Windows. So basically it's a signed binary, a proven binary that someone could take and what's happening here is used to uh, conduct additional attacks. So in this case, basically back in, I guess, September last year, there was a report that, uh, you know, it was using Finger just to download uh, software remotely or exfiltrate data. But what the new thing is, they're using a phishing campaign to basically attach that to the email, which is a, a job resume send that on like a normal standard phishing attack, uh, send that to someone, and then once that's opened, um, you know, the obviously the maldoc basically runs the finger command to download a base64 encoded certificate, but that base64 encoded certificate is actually the malware executable. And the malware executable is the one that basically downloads a team viewer uh, executable, which in turn sideloads the malicious DLL, which is the MindBridge uh, backdoor. So yeah, so it's actually, even though it's hardly been used in years, as you say, it's definitely something that has been uh, seen and, and uh, it's being seen now. Um, you know, they also call that a, a LOL bin or a living off the land binary. Some call it a laugh out loud binary because the fact is that it's basically uh, mm -hmm. a LOL binary is basically able to do things that beyond what the expectations of the original binary or piece of software was. So in this case, they're using that Windows binary to, you know, exfiltrate data, or in this case, download that malicious DLL, and then subsequently the MindBridge backdoor, which in turn will give uh, an attacker basically access to the system where they want to update, delete, whatever access they need based upon that. So it was pretty interesting to see that um, used because, like you said, it haven't been used in so long. And, you know, there's other uh, binaries within Windows that, you know, people are using as well, but this one just struck me. Uh, right off the bat, just because, as you say, being so old that now it's kind of resurfacing in essence, um, you know, because, again, most port 79s are blocked or not allowed, and just that service is not even running to even allow it. However, um, so what you can do and what they have seen a little bit is that um, if you are blocked at port 79, uh, you can port redirect that to a local IP, let's say, and then send that out across another specific port. So even though 79 may be blocked, you're doing a redirection uh, internally or locally uh, to get those commands sent out. And based upon, uh, you know, what's came out is that it can be used as even a, a script that to be used as like a, a rude or crude, um, a crude or rudimentary uh, command and control uh, server, basically. So uh, set up your, you know, your particular attacks in that particular server is on your side using the finger command, again, exfiltrate data, remotely down additional software pieces. So it's actually quite interesting especially, like you said, being so old. Yeah, uh, you know, the thing that kind of stood out to me, you know, having analyzed a lot of malware in the past, um, especially when you see some of these um, kind of like dropper scripts or batch scripts that they'll use, there's a limited set of commands available just natively in Windows that you can run command line from batch um, in order to fetch files from the Internet. So, you know, people have used cert util and I think TFTP and FTP are there and you can script those. Um, so I guess this figure one is one that maybe a lot of people have overlooked. Um, I wasn't even aware it was there uh, in Windows, but that's an interesting new technique of a way to have a command line tool, Windows side, that I can reach out to something else on the internet and get 
some information back, write it to a file, and then do something with it. So that's basically exactly what you said they're doing there. And I know, you know, Microsoft, you know, they did put in some uh, protections for cert util, like you mentioned, to stop uh, if it sees HTTP or HTTPS calls. However, this is basically, as you say, you know, using finger to uh, redirect that down further down into a, a stream, basically, uh, to some additional subcommands to create that and eventually execute it. So it's, yeah, it's definitely, you know, one to look at. And that's why I kind of want to, you know, bring it about because, again, um, there's others that exist that, uh, you know, are, are becoming, you know, identified. Uh, you know, I think it's been patched out, but there was one. Uh, based on one of the update commands to where Microsoft included the capability to subsequently, you know, call out and download specific images or, or files from other systems. So that was, a, again, a feature Microsoft put in. Now, they've removed that since, but just, again, um, these are pretty interesting. Just the fact that just the name, L, you know, LOL binary or living off the land binary is just quite interesting in how this is, you know, coming about or, or you know, resurfacing, basically. Um, and you know, while we're uh, while you were describing this story, just out of curiosity, I went to Shodan, um, and there are 186,000 or so servers out there on the internet listening on port 79, um, yeah. port 79 TCP, <laughs> which is the finger port. Now, whether they're actually delivering finger or you know, probably the large vast majority of them are not delivering malicious payloads; they're just the finger servers that have been left open. Um, it's interesting, though, that, you know, that service is still out there, um, and um, I guess it could be used for bad purposes, like you've described here. Yeah, definitely, because like I said, you know, yeah, th that was a thought. You know, most people have turned that off or just don't even include it in the distribution, so you have to basically manually, I guess, install it, you know, if you wanted to use that or manually set that up just because they, it's a known, you know, basically I like to call it extinct, you know, it's a piece of software, basically. But, again, yeah, if there's that many out there, then, again, it just takes a couple to – be compromised and then you know start you know running to where you have a larger set of attack hosts or systems out there. You were saying it's not always installed by default, but no. is it something that is just in any version of Windows? Like I, I I've actually never used it personally. I, I never... <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't um, gone back to. I think right now it's definitely <laughs> Windows 10. I haven't gone back to check yeah. the other version, but I understand that it's definitely just for you know Windows 10 now. But uh, yeah, so that, that's actually a good question. Like I say I haven't checked each sub you know version prior, but again primary being Windows 10, especially because, you know, a lot of the, again, now things can still run other versions, but, you know, the support doesn't exist for most, you know, prior, right. some of the prior Windows versions, so a lot of people upgrade. But again, um, you know, that would be good to just truly understand, you know, especially if there's an older system out there running it. Yeah, I mean, the older the system, I assume the less chances for something that would protect you against this, right? Like, um, it means that you're probably running it, have been running it for a long time, I don't get antivirus updates or anything that protects you anymore. <laughs> um, right. And now you have, now you have this. Well, I, I guess, yeah, I, I'll be surprised if this is on like server, for example. I guess that's what I was telling. You know, is it in Windows Server by default? That would be a, a, a you know, a, to me, a larger population or population that would be more critical than you know, like your regular home user. If, if, if this is still installing their systems, um, or allowing well, yeah. to be using their systems, right? I mean, it probably would like maybe like you know small, mid size, maybe like home users. Sure. But I mean, your enterprise level, you know, there's going to be like you know we have a lot more you know protection in place for checking emails incoming, uh, endpoint security, you know, anything. But again, you know, it's just uh, you know if that is able to get in, someone's able to get that you know <laughs> malicious document or maldoc in, right? Yeah. And then yeah, there's possibility that it, you know it could be sent out. Like granted, you know, there's other ways filtering port 79 or blocking or, right. or even running app locker to restrict finger or not even let right. users run the, you know, blocking them from running the command uh, prompt or command executable. But um, the primary thing is, yeah, it's just the fact that, you know, those do exist. So there's just kind of a new, not so much a new vector, but just a new area or avenue that an attacker can use to try to, you know, uh, perform an attack or, you know, uh, get into a system basically. So, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me, I think Brian Lexer was on the, like last year mentioning, one, once Windows subsystem 2 becomes like default in the Windows operating system, now we have to like start thinking about all these new things that your yep. Windows administrator or security person just didn't have to think about. And, you know, right. it could be all things again, like, oh, wait, I forgot to remove Telnet from my Windows subsystem from Linux. <laughs> no, you <laughs> and, and, 
<laughs> yeah. You know, and that's true, you know, because that's always the thing. Well, not always, but, you know, it happens a lot, right, where we all forget about some of the older uh, utilities or things, and sure enough, they come around or someone, you know, forgets about a particular signature patch they put in to block something and, and then maybe overwrite that at a later date, and then there we go again, going right back to some of the old, you know, uh, exploits or vulnerabilities that, you know, that existed. So, yeah, it's just, again, um, you know, I'm looking at one of the, another report I saw that, they had, a, I think, late last year, there was approximately about 13 uh, what we call LOL binaries or, you know, living off land binaries in Windows alone that were identified as having capabilities of doing things. So 13 then, now I'm sure they patched, patched a lot of those. But, again, there's always probably going to be something new, you know, on a new one come out. And, again, because, like we mentioned earlier, because that is basically a signed, you know, executable where Microsoft views it as, you know, legitimate, that's kind of where, you know, it, it does add that extra avenue of, you know, where someone could possibly get around and not being seen as, uh, you know, uh, malicious activity.